Hello, and thank you for joining me on I Am Maggie. And what we have been doing is we have been doing a wonderful, delicious slow crawl through the magic of everyday life by Maria Zeppitz. And we are currently in chapter 21. Uh, we have 21, 22, 23, and 24. And I'm gonna do a little reading a little bit about Maria Zeppitz. So we are like almost done with this book and it's very exciting. Uh, I'm really grateful that you are here with me. I just always wanna let you know that I appreciate seeing your bright, shining energy fields. And when you do get a chance, please hit subscribe and like, and I would love to hear your positive comments. We are all working towards our goals and dreams here, and I thank you for supporting me. So like I said, we are in chapter 21. Chapter 21 is called The Role of Change of Scenery. Ooh, that's so exciting. And I hope that you are seeing that you are the magic of everyday life. The magic of everyday life is in you and it's pushed out all around you. And now we're going to talk a little bit about the role of change of scenery. And I think we can, a lot of us can already, sometimes when you change your scenery, you are literally changing a life track. And when you do it, it's like you're walking in your dreams. It could be the opposite, but over here we're staying focused in the positive. So here we go. The role of the change of scenery. In cases of depression, chronic irritability, and overwrought nervousness, doctors in the past, almost to the point of banal, recommended a change of scenery. Now they recommend pills, right? So if you come across yourself being depressed, chronically irritable, or nervous, or anxiety, try it. Take a step outside. Um, in my old uh, workplace, I used to walk right outside the hospital and hug a tree. And it was funny because I'd be hugging a tree and getting energy from a tree and slowly all the trees ended up getting hugged. So, you know, if you want a friend, be a friend. And that's to the trees and everybody. Okay, so in the past, the doctors would recommend a change of scenery to step out of the old, the customary, and the ir irritatingly habitual, right? So break the pattern, step out somewhere else, it'll give you a fresh new eyes. Without a doubt, this method of healing has several hundred years of favorable statistics. And they were applied in cases of mourning, illness, disappointment in love, divorce squabbles, and trials producing other various neurothenic symptoms. Because they realized that human nature responds to change in a surprisingly short time. Also, sometimes if you are in a new environment, you can sort of be uh, stunned by the newness in a way, and you become, you tend to get in your body and you become very present, and you become in the moment, which is also very healing. So choose a wonderful place to step out to. So, but, but as to, to why it does, the curiosity of exact science does not extend that far. Well, I think we have clues though, right? So whereas the keys that could revolutionize all of the medical sciences lie hidden in this fact, as well as in so many other results based on natural healing. Because you know, our, we are designed to heal. Like you, we're not designed to get sick and, and stay sick. If the body doesn't counter a challenge, your body's amazing, my body's amazing. We are designed to heal. So if you're on some kind of path of healing, if it's mental, physical, spiritual, like I said, if you do the work, the work will do you. Don't ever give up in your search, but also remember that the body will heal itself if you let it and if you listen to it. Okay, in order to accomplish this, of course, Leaving behind the sphere of symptomology, one must probe with entirely new and entirely ancient examination methods to reach the invisible empire of causes. So the invisible empire of causes. So we all know that thought forms get jug in there and then they become our reality. So this is not, again, I'm always trying to be very gentle. If you're in some kind of really um, immediate situation, of course, 
you know, the rubber meets the road, reality, we're part of the common sense show. You have to remove yourself from that and then you can, you know, rest and digest and do deep healing work. If you need to get out of a situation, you do so. But as you do, you will be able to start to comb through the invisible empire of causes that's within us, in our mind, in our hearts, you know? So it may be something somebody said to you as a child and that program's still running. Uh, maybe a very big dream or some kind of thing that happened in your life that, you know, came in and then just kind of wiped out your confidence or gave you a bitter look at life. You know, when we get through the invisible, when we start to look through the invisible empire of causes, which is actually not so invisible, but anyway, when we get through it, we can upgrade our lives. So the starting point for this kind of examination is the statement already articulated that every kind of illness is a form of symbolic conversation. So our bodies are talking to us. Um, I was um, listening to Ray, Renee Garcia from Reality Transurfing last night, and one of the things she said is that your subconscious knows something's just not right. So something's not right in Denmark, and then the body begins to talk with symptoms. So you think a lot of us, um, depending on like how, if you're new to these things, just hang in there and keep coming with it. If you're very advanced, I know you're picking up when I'm laying down, but the bottom line is our body is talking to us over the subtleties that are coming into our mind and our heart, if that coherence isn't there, etc. So if someone wants to determine, therefore, a precise diagnosis, they must be versed in the universal language of symbols. Medicine can only be determined by proper diagnosis. Moreover, the vaccine culture that defeats the illness can be produced from the disease itself, like polio. Since, however, the appearance of the symptom in the body is only a secondary phenomenon due to an invisible cause, the medicine must be drawn from the invisible cause. This, however, is rooted in the soul. So we actually talked about this um, finding the antidote dope in the poison, and she's again referring to finding the medicine within the you know cause. And I, once again, I wanted to. I always want to say we're on a spectrum here, and some people are in immediate things, like they have an immediate respiratory distress, or they have an immediate pain, or whatever. This is a common sense show. This is common sense. Of course, if you have something immediate, you need to address it. Of course, if you're very confident in your abilities to pray to creator and, you know, which is within us, or to meditate, or to, you know, of course you want to use every tool that you can, but the more that you get confident, you just begin to embody that place of healing. And there's not a whole lot of like begging or hoping because you know and you feel and the God is there and the miracle is. But if, you know, it's like CrossFit, spiritual CrossFit, if you're working through it and you're developing that faith, right? Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of the Lord. Just keep pouring it in because slowly by slowly it clicks the mind, body, spirit, and heart and, every, and your field, right? So never, ever, ever give up keep going but I'm just wanting to say that okay when we get past immediate things then we can do deeper work so if you you know common sense if you need to remove yourself from things because it's very hard to comb through the invisible empire when you're actually being attacked right so if you're in those types of situations of course address the immediate uh, then we comb the invisible empire for your upgrade so the so she says the causes, the invisible cause, is, however, is rooted in our souls. The cause is always betrayed by the symbology of the disease itself. So it's kind of like she's saying, we, we begin to go and focus on the disease process instead of looking at the root cause. And a lot of what's happening now, you know, with medicine, it's like giving um, a pill for this and a pill for that. It, but it's actually never really addressing like, well, why do you have rashes? And why is your skin falling off? And why are you choking? Or why can't you digest food? Or, you know, let's say for instance that you drank jet fuel 
or you have mold toxicity, or you've um, been exposed to you know lead or mercury or something, and you know we can start to look at you know okay the headache and the vomiting and miss the fact that oh we need to get you out of away from drinking jet fuel we need to get you away from those heavy metals we need to help you detox right so, so the, sometimes the disease we get distracted and you know just padding it with things instead of actually looking at root cause so here we go the cause is always betrayed by the symbology of the disease itself for this reason the real single truly permanent acronym that causes healing can be no other than symbology that affects the soul and surgically removes the disease creating ganglia this is the so-called counter posture to the disease crystallized posture a series of healing anti-symbols which often are effective even when the patient does not recognize their meaning. So that could refer to a placebo, or that could re refer to somebody providing a very healing field or nutritious food. Um, I also want to say that this book, uh, really we're devil, d d digging deep into our psyche and our spirit. And so this is part of it too, that, She's looking at how when somebody has, you know, improper thought programs running or things in their heart, that that's also going to manifest in disease. And we want to continue to look through our invisible empire to make sure that what's going on isn't some kind of immediate exposure to something. The change of scen scenery is such a symbolic act as well because in the Malu in which we live, Malu, they love that in nursing, the healing environment, because in the Malu in which we live and where tribulations or shock befall us, people and objects have absorbed our thoughts, feeling, suffering, temperament, and hold us captive. So I wanna pose an, um, a thought to you, real quick, or not just a thought, but those of you who are sensitive to energy and even those who are not try to think about it like a person that you loved or maybe it could be the opposite and for instance like your grandma's house or your grandpa's house or your parents or whoever this person is loved one isn't it so interesting that even if they have gone on with god you can walk into the house and you can still sense their presence you can look at things and it feels sometimes like you are in an era gone by, like they're still there. And then the bottom line is energy is never created to destroy. We, d we don't just die and disappear. We're still, we're just not in our bodies where we move on. And, you know, you look at this and she's talking about that you can come into an environment and the, pe the objects have absorbed thoughts, feelings, suffering, temperament and hold us captive. So uh, they can also be uplifting. Um, also, you know, an idea too, sometimes you can go into a graveyard. I'm not telling anybody you should do this, especially if you don't have good um, shields, but you know, you can go into a graveyard and there's a lot going on there. It's not just dead people. Um, you can sense, you know, sometimes there's peace in certain graveyards and you can sense in other graveyards horrible things have occurred before somebody passed, even in houses that, you know, we say are haunted, um, you know? So anyway, we are in these beautiful temples from God and we are in the process of upgrading ourselves. And we are one and we are grateful for Maria Zepes and her book, The Magic of Everyday Life. So we are gonna keep working on through this book I hope that you are beginning to see that you are the magic of everyday life and the magic of everyday life is within you and all around you. That life, every part of life is a miracle and in God's kingdom, it's, it's not a miracle, it's an everyday, everyday thing. So I just want to thank you for spending this time with me as you are a miracle, an everyday event in the kingdom of God. 
and I thank you for spending this time with me. And when you do get a chance, please hit that like and subscribe button and leave your positive comments. Let me know how this may be helping you or any other thoughts about your goals and dreams or where you're going in life. All right, and you know what's next. You know what's next. <laughs> you know what's next. Peace in, peace out.